Today I'm going to be riding on the Czech Republic's newest train, checking out the modern and stylish new interiors on this country's recently introduced long-distance fleet as we travel along the route of the Western Express. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm here in Prague at Praha Hlavny Nádraží and I'm going to be travelling on board České Drahy's newest train, the Interjet. I'll be riding this one out to Plzeň Hlavny Nádraží and I'll be travelling in the new first class, so let's go! Praha Hlavny Nádraží is the main station here in the Czech capital, serving as a hub for all long distance and some regional trains. Heading into the lower entrance to the station leads you to this modern concourse area, which to me feels a lot like an airport. And that includes the presence of a bunch of food outlets. The station features a large ticket office for Ceske Drahi, the national operator, with some space to sit found above this. There was a spectacular Lego recreation of the station building found here, with every detail faithfully represented. My train today is number IC562, the 1238 to Cheb. The train is part of the Zapadni Express or Western Express service, operated by the national operator Ceske Drahi. With my first class ticket, I have free access to the Chede Lounge. This offers little more than a bit of comfortable seating, tables, nice decor, and use of the complimentary hot drinks machine or water dispenser. Despite its basic features, I was surprised to find that I was the only person in here, especially considering the very generous access requirements. No visit to this station is complete without seeing the classic station building. The Fantova Bodova is an Art Nouveau style construction dating back to 1909. A quick stop at the Fantova Kavarna Cafe is a great chance to relax in the majestic grandeur of this area. Time to head through to the platforms, where we are met by an incredible train shed. The station sees an array of services from various private and national operators, running to a large selection of destinations both domestically and internationally. Waiting on Platform 1 is my Interjet. It is a fixed five-car formation, part of a fleet of ten sets built by Škoda and Siemens from 2018. The fleet was built with compatibility in mind, being able to operate with any standard locomotive, such as this 1987-built Škoda electric locomotive. Each set consists of one first-class carriage and four second-class carriages. If you think that's not enough capacity, then no problem as additional carriages can easily be coupled to the formation. Now you may recognise the design of the Interjet. That's because it uses the same carriage type as the famous Railjet, used on trains to Austria and beyond. Anyway, it's time to get on board. First class is found in carriage 372, at the front of this service. The train isn't very busy, so I chose to sit here in seat number 91. Today's route will take us from Czech's capital, running from the main station across the river to Smichov, before a pleasant and simple run through the central Bohemian and Pilsen regions to our destination today. Departure is on time as we begin to weave through Czech's capital city. Ladies 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board the Intercity Train 562 Zapani Express from Brahma Lakshana Rashi to For the first minutes of the journey, we can see some beautiful architecture here in the capital. Shortly after, we cross over Prague's river, the Vltava. Seven minutes of travel later, we arrive into the next station in the city, Praha Smichov. This serves as our only intermediate stop, the train now running fast to Plzeň. Time to look at the carriage here in first class. Firstly, the seat itself. It looks the part, being the same seat as on many of Ceske Drahi's other long-distance trains. The seat has great padding and ergonomics, leading to a really comfortable journey overall. The padded headrest with wings is also much appreciated. All seats get a pair of folding armrests with a good amount of padding. For legroom, the Interjet really excels. There's loads of room to stretch out here. A folding footrest can be found on the seat in front too. Above this is a storage net for smaller items. Finally, there's a folding seat back table, which is really large. It even comes equipped with a folding extension bracket, ideal for a laptop. On to the recline, controlled by this lever. It offers a great amount of recline, further improving an already great seat. And for keeping things tidy, there's a small bin attached to the seats in front. As a long-distance train, we pass through many smaller stations, such as Dobrshikovice. Stations like this are only served by local trains on shorter journeys, with connections to faster trains planned in at larger stations. After departure, the conductor carries out a ticket inspection, with a complimentary bottle of water included in first class. Following this, a trolley service comes through, selling well-priced snacks and drinks. We follow the course of the Berunka River as far as its titular city of Berun, as well as running through the peaceful countryside and farmland. Forty minutes into the journey and we're on the approach to Berun. This major station is served by local and fast trains, but intercity trains like this one don't make the stop here. If you've ever got some time here, then I recommend visiting Pivovar Perunski Medvyed. This is a pub tucked away in what seems like a scrapyard. If you've ever wanted a nice cold Czech beer while sat next to a tank, here's your opportunity. Anyway, time to have a look around the rest of the train. Firstly, the toilets. As you'd hope for a brand new train, they were in great condition, with the soap, water and hand dryer all working as expected. Moving on to the vestibule, you can find some recycling bins, a nice touch. Into the next carriage and you can find the staffed info point, as well as the accessible toilet and space for wheelchairs. Further down is the children's zone, featuring a mini cinema showing cartoons. You can also find two spaces for pushchairs. Now through to a regular second class carriage, and I've got to say it seemed pretty nice, with a key benefit being the seats all lining up with the windows, something that you don't always see on modern trains these days. Finally, at the very rear of the train is a bicycle storage area, with space for eight bikes. 
A ticket and mandatory reservation for bike transport costs 85 Czech crowns. And this video would not be complete without me showing you the fantastic view out of the back window. Back to my seat, where there's a few more interesting details to showcase. Firstly, the power sockets. For sets of two seats together, you can easily find the European style socket, USB socket and even a wireless charging pad between seats. For single seats then be ready to get down on your knees with the socket being tucked very far beneath the seat cushion. Free and easy to connect Wi-Fi is provided throughout the entire train. Individual reading lights can be found above each seat. and each window has an adjustable window blind, with sliding coat hooks being found just above this. Some of these are used to store Ceske Drahi's onboard Magazine Pro Vas, featuring some Czech railway information and of course local advertisements. Back to the journey and we're gracefully riding through the hills of central Bohemia and Pilsen regions. A brief stop is made at Holubkov. Due to crossing with a train from the opposite direction. I think there was some sort of track works ahead. We are now in the Eyepovitsa tunnel. It's a shame I didn't get a shot of the entrance, as this tunnel is the longest railway tunnel in the Czech Republic, shaving a handy 10 minutes off of journey times. For today's journey, I paid 226 Czech crowns for the ticket and 35 for a reservation, leading to a total cost of 261 Czech crowns. On this 66 mile journey, that leads to a price per mile of about 13p, which I really have to say is great value overall. My experience on the Interjet today was very positive, with the train being modern, comfortable, flexible and well adapted to the needs of a modern passenger. It makes me really look forward to Ceske Drahi's upcoming international fleet, the Comfort Jet, which are built to a similar design. It's great to see railway companies designing and operating trains like this one, with so much attention to detail, for example the children's cinema, ample bike storage and the great window alignment. With a couple minutes of delay, we're now on the approach to Plzeň Chlavny Nádraží. The station is a Czech national heritage site, and for good reason too, with its stunning 1900s building being a true sight to behold, though sadly this was under renovation when I visited. Time to get off the train, which will now continue on to Chib at the German border. If you enjoyed this video then you're probably going to want to check out my video of one of Switzerland's newest trains too, with stunning scenery in the Alps on offer. Click up here to watch it, and I look forward to seeing you on my next journey.